Well, <clears throat> so today we have um, two speakers. Um, well, Annette uh, Collier, she is our chair of the diversity committee for GPAR. Um, and this is where the, the committee is really where this idea came from um, in terms of having something prepared for mental health. Um, I know the market is very tough. Real estate in general can feel isolating at times. Um, so our committee thought that doing something on mental health would be very timely as we head into the holidays. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce um, our speakers today. Today we have Dr. Dennis um, Alimana. Um, he has actually done our leadership training for the association as well. So we've gotten to know Dennis pretty well over the last uh, couple months here. Dennis is the co-founder of Mindset for Success, um, Mindset for Success LLC. Dennis brings to his work a guided uh, to his work guiding leaders in transformational culture change over 30 years of business experience in startups, sales, culture shaping, organizational development, ERP execution, training, coaching, consulting positions. Um, he has a personal purpose of making a difference through leadership and relationship building. So Dennis, um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about your background there? Yeah, sure. Uh, I uh, got my PhD at Temple University. So uh, uh, got the very local. familiar with uh, Broad Street uh, in the 1980s. So uh, uh, yeah, so I uh, had my own consulting business. I started out with a business called Wellbeing Systems. Uh, and then uh, I got into corporate work and joined a company that was uh, focused on healthy functioning, <clears throat> mental health, and uh, working with corporations and high-level executives and helping them shape their uh, cultures. So, um, uh, so that's that's what I've been doing. I got out of that organizational uh, work uh, in the year 2020, and just been doing some uh, work with mindset for success, uh, just to help people with their uh, their own clear thinking. So. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. And then we also have Annette Collier. As I said, she is the chair of our 2023 Diversity Committee. Good morning, Annette. Good morning, everybody. I'm really excited about this conversation today, especially in this market that we're in. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump in, Dennis. Take it away. Yes, you bet. Um, so first of all, I thought we'd start out with what is mental health? Um, there's lots of different definitions from uh, wellness to illness. And uh, somebody you might be familiar with is a guy by the name of Abraham Maslow. Abraham Maslow was one of the first psychologists to say, <clears throat> you know, we've been studying illness and, and dysfunction for a long time. What about uh, people that uh, are performing well? What can we learn about them and then uh, help others uh, emulate uh, that kind of good mental functioning. So um, that is something I've been working on for the last 30 years with uh, executive and business uh, nonprofits and uh, community organizations. And so uh, mental health. And, and as I talked to Brittany in advance of this session, uh, I came up with uh, a definition, you know, the ability to do the thinking to lead a joyful life. So, uh, you know, we, we all have mental health challenges. You know, we all have anxiety. We all have times when we're feeling sad. Uh, and so we, we have to understand that uh, a little bit of that is normal. Uh, we all have those, those conditions. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through this. But uh, if you cannot, function and, and pay your bills and take care of your family and do the things you need to do to just live a, a, a live, live your life, then, uh, you know, that is an indicator, you know, uh, that, and we'll talk more about what other indicators we might have, you know, for uh, our, our mental health. Um, so, so that's the definition we'll go with today, uh, but understand there's lots of different definitions for uh, mental health and, um, you know, what it actually means. Uh, what I thought I'd do is, uh, you know, if you know how to use the chat function uh, up up uh, on our, there's a little ribbon up there and it says chat. If you 
click on that. Uh, if you could use one word that uh, best describes your energy today, what would be the word? You know, so just type in the chat uh, one word that best describes your energy today. And uh, that would be something for you to start thinking about, you know, your own mental health and where you are, you know, right now as you sit on this uh, call for us. So uh, just go ahead and type that in. Brittany, you can uh, read out some things if you, uh, if you can see them there on the chat. Yeah, we have a uh, high energy, stressed, numb, excited. We have a comment about the Eagles bummed um, oh, yeah. and suppressed was one. Yeah, so good. Uh, so a, a wide variety as you heard those words, uh, you know, of levels of mental health where we are. Uh, and it's been proven that when a team's football team or baseball team loses a big game, that the city is a little depressed. You know, we're sort of feeling bummed, you know. And again, that's that's normal. That happens uh, wherever you are. Uh, I, I was from Pittsburgh. I grew up in Pittsburgh. And uh, you talk about being bummed. This year has been a really terrible year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, uh so that is just something that does affect our mental health. Again, it doesn't take us too far one way or the other, but it does, you know, affect our energy. So uh, there are lots of other ex external challenges, uh, you know, your business, uh, how well you're doing. You know, if you got a, a bunch of sales and things are humming, you know, you feel great uh, when you're struggling and, um, you know, it can be something different. The economy. Uh, as interest rates went up, you know, that's, that's more of a challenge in, in real estate. The social media, uh, you know, we're still researching and trying to find out, but we know for sure that social media can affect our mental health. And so um, I always ask people to make sure you're conscious of how much you're on social media. Uh, and it's good to you know, take a diet and 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 sometimes eliminate social media for certain parts of, of the day and certain parts of your life because um, social media is designed to get your attention and they know how to do that very well. Uh, so uh, sometimes you just have to say no and stop somewhere. And especially our kids are you know growing up with social media. Um, you know, sometimes they're better at filtering out what they shouldn't be listening to than than adults, uh, because it's it's something they're they've grown up with. News media, same thing. Uh, you know, news is designed to keep, capture your attention, and so they always sensationalize everything that's on the news. Somebody said that if uh, uh, if a statistician really wrote the news, you wouldn't see anything in the news because statisticians always eliminate the extremes. And so they look for the averages. That does not make the news. Uh, so again, we have to be aware that uh, the news media is trying to capture our attention with, uh, with their headlines and sensationalism. So um, finances, you know, your finances are often a series of stressors uh you know especially if you have a significant other uh, usually you both brought up in different financial environments and and sometimes the way we look at finances can cause stress for us as well and then during the holidays of course family can be a great source of stress uh it's just interesting to note that there's a thing called u stress eu stress and distress distress is the bad stuff Okay, we know what that is. But you stress is good stress. So you see family members that you really enjoy and you love. And uh, what happens to your body, whether it's you stress or distress, chemically, your body reacts the same way. And so, you know, you get adrenaline pumped into your system. And, uh, you know, your the blood uh, is drawn from your hands and your extremities into your heart because that's the stress response. Even good stress uh, has, has the same effect, which I always thought was amazing, but, but that's what the physiologists tell us. So it's a good thing for you to know that even during the holidays when you're 
welcoming the holiday and all the energy that comes with it, uh, it still takes a toll on our on our bodies physically. Uh, so internal challenges uh, is really getting to know yourself. Um, and all the groups I work with, that's where we start, is know thyself. Uh, and you'd think that living with yourself for as long as you have, you'd think you'd know yourself, but it's a challenge. <clears throat> the Greeks said know thyself. They also said it's the hardest thing to do is to know yourself. So uh, one thing is that voice in your head and uh, self-talk that we all have. Uh, and if you're wondering, what is Dennis talking about? Well, that's the voice. That's the very voice in your head, you know, is, is you know, and, it, and you have a dialogue with that voice in your head. And that's normal. That's what uh, we all deal with. Sometimes there's many voices in our heads. So it's uh, sort of a committee in there working sometimes. Again, that is normal. Uh, there's some nice book resources uh, I added to the end of this. And there's one book called Chatter. And it's all about the chatter we have in our heads with ourselves. So again, that's normal. Uh, now, you might have what we call ants, automatic negative thoughts. Automatic negative thoughts, if they constantly uh, come into your mind, uh, what you can do is you can really discipline yourself to just let them go. Just think of clouds coming across the sky, and that could be an automatic negative thought, and just notice it and let it go. You don't have to grab it, hang on to it, and bring it into your current reality. Uh, so automatic negative thoughts, be aware of those. Triggers. We all have triggers. We might have that uh, relative that, uh, you know, that just knows how to hit my hot button and uh, to just be aware of those triggers uh, as they happen, you know, to, to you during the holiday season or any time during the year. A big one in Western culture is a lack of sleep and rest. Uh, everybody's moving fast and Sometimes it's, it's just, we don't get enough sleep. And most people need seven to eight hours of sleep uh, every night. And very few people can get by and function at their best with uh, much less than, than seven or eight hours. I did not believe that for the longest time. And when I was working in organizations, I traveled a lot and I, I got three or four hours of sleep a night and thought I could function perfectly fine. Uh, I was not at my best, but uh, I tried to convince myself that that's all I needed. So um, once you start getting seven or eight hours of sleep, you'll start to feel different during the day. That's an indicator that, uh, you know, you're, you've been depriving yourself of some sleep. So control what you can control. If you look at a lot of those external challenges, uh, there's not a lot that you can do about the economy. Um, you know, social media, I mean, you can turn it off, and, and but it's, it's going to still keep coming at you. So uh, control what you can control. And a lot of that is our reaction to what we hear around us. So that's a big point is just control what you can't control and just let go of all the other things that you cannot control. Um, so I know that's easier said than done, but uh, you know, good thing to try to do. And here are some tools for uh, and strategies that you can use to help your with your mental health during these busy times, hectic times. and. Um, you know, as Annette said, the, uh, the business is in a challenging environment. And um, I, I like to use the Martin Luther uh, King quote. Uh, he said, uh, it's not where we are during times of comfort and convenience that measures who we are. It's where we are, are during conflict and controversy that really measures who we are. And I think that's a wonderful quote for this kind of time when we're trying to be at our best, even when things aren't going very well for us all around us.
Okay, so you can be at your best even during a very stressful time, uh, even when you have to make tough decisions. Uh, and so just be aware that uh, you don't have to descend, you know, into depression or anxiety because of what's happening externally, you know, around you. So um, there's a story of uh, a Native American grandfather and he's got his grandson on his knee and his grandfather says, you know, inside of each of us, there is a terrible battle going on between a good wolf and a bad wolf. And of course the grandson looks up and says, well, who wins? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. And that's a good reminder for us during this time to just what are we feeding our minds? Uh, and so that includes the news, the social media, all the things you can listen to. Uh, and, you know, that voice in your head, is that something that's true? Is it something that's good? Is it something that is going to help me? be successful moving forward? Uh, those are good questions for us to ask as we uh, go through this. But here are some tools and, and strategies. Uh, when you get stressed, you have a tendency to tighten up, hold your breath. And if you can just learn that, you know, when, when you're in a tense moment, to just stop and take a deep breath. You can do that right now. Just take a deep breath, just breathe in, and then exhale. Yeah. And, and you can close your eyes and you can just start to count back from 10 and take a deep breath with each, each uh, count that you come back. And that's a way of sort of slowing down your mind because our minds move very quickly. We have like 60,000 thoughts a day. So it can be overwhelming in there. So just learning how to slow down, take a deep breath, when all this chaos is happening around you is an excellent way to uh, try to level set your own mental health. Uh, schedule breaks. Uh, create what I call white space in your calendar uh, to have meetings backed up, back, you know, back to back, on the hour, uh, one meeting goes over and the next meeting starts late. It, it creates this cascade, this domino effect that's not healthy at all. So a lot of times I'll go into organizations and just say, look, just make your hour meetings 45 minutes or 50 minutes. That's that's it. And at the end of 50 minutes, you know, you have time to debrief what you just experienced and get prepared for the next meeting. So Try to create more white space in your calendar and uh, schedule breaks where you have a chance to just maybe get out and take a quick walk. Uh, just get away from your desk, computer, Zoom. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, certainly certain music uh, is very motivating for us and, and relaxing. Um, it can also drive us to you know get things done. So music and sound is something to uh uh, cer certainly bring into your life and be aware that it, it can calm you down. It can get you excited, whatever, um, you know, the, the music is. Um, taking time out every once in a while. If you're in a conversation, you can see that it's not going very well. Time out. <laughs> time out. Uh, let's just take a deep breath. Come back in a couple minutes and resume the conversation. You'll be surprised how different the conversation can be when you just take a quick time out. Of course, prayer and meditation is uh, something that a lot of people are practicing on a daily basis. That helps sort of slow things down as well. Uh, and there's sleep again. Um, now, my wife said, why do you put sleep under mindfulness exercise? And I said, well, it could be either place, of course, but, uh, you know, if your mind is busy and racing, you will not be able to sleep. And and so uh, it can be here. Of course, it can be, uh, you know, under, under body exercises as well. 
So walking, running, I'm sure some of you go to the gym and do some of these things. Um, and uh, certainly as you get older, it's, it gets more difficult to do the running. Your joints just don't put up with it anymore. But walking is still good. Swimming is, is a great exercise as well. Uh, easier on the joints. And then uh, nature. Uh, there's a thing called forest bathing. Now, if you look into this, uh, trees and uh, a forest, a jungle uh, has energy in it. And, uh, you know, you, the trees also are, are exhaling oxygen. Uh, we exhale carbon dioxide. Trees inhale carbon dioxide. So there is a rhythm that you can actually get when you inter, are in a forested area. And it's very healthy. Uh, it's been connected through research uh, that, you know, we get calmer, less depressed, less anxious. Uh, so this whole idea of spending some time in nature is very, uh, very healthy for our mental state as well. Of course, sports, uh, music, dance, movement, uh, these are all great uh, things as well. Pickleball is becoming a really hot thing across the country. So a lot of people are picking up uh, pickleball and, uh, you know, so uh, just keep moving. That's, I think that's one of the challenges is as we get older, you know, we, we need to just keep moving the way our muscles were intended to move. Uh, tai Chi helps with that, uh, yoga. Um, and it's great to have an exercise partner, somebody that you're doing this exercising with, uh, because you might not feel like it one day, like, ah, I just don't feel like going to the gym today. But if you've got somebody waiting for you, you have a more tendency to go, okay, I'm going to push myself. I'm going to get there. I don't want to disappoint this person. Uh, so my best shape I ever was in, I had two exercise partners and they were always waiting for me at the gym three days a week. And we spent 90 minutes, you know, doing some workout stuff and it was, and it was great. So, uh, just from personal experience, those exercise partners work very well. So, uh, what, who is your support network? Uh, I want you to think about that right now, because during a stressful time, it is wonderful to have a support network. Now, I have some things here that, you know, that network might consist of family, friends, <clears throat> counselors, physicians, clergy, uh, community members, uh, support groups, business relationships. So there's all kinds of places for us to get our support network from. But I want you to think about that because that's very important during times of stress. When you really feel like you need somebody, do you have someone that you can talk to? Uh, and are you a support network for someone else? I always say, you know, we should all have at least a couple people that we could call at three o'clock in the morning and they'll answer the call. And recently, I just had a friend that went through some tough stuff. <clears throat> and I told him, I called him up just recently and said, hey, I want you to know, if you need me at 3 o'clock in the morning, call. I'm going to answer the phone. I just wanted to remind him that I was part of his support network. Um, so that's an important thing just to know that you have somewhere to go, someone to talk to. Um, <clears throat> during COVID, we learned that uh, insurance companies, you know, they were not paying for telehealth services uh, before COVID. During COVID, they were forced to accept it. And it is still going on now that uh, insurance will cover uh, counseling services uh, that, that are virtual. So um, uh, I left some resources that you can refer to uh, at the end of this presentation. And, uh, and you can try to find somebody that, you know, that will work well with you. So support network, think about that. Think about who it might be and maybe even have conversations with them to say, 
you know what? I have you as part of my support network. I just, you know, I just want to double check with you. Is that okay? Are we, you know, are we in good shape? Um, and that could be helpful too, just to reinforce the idea of uh, being able to call somebody. And then, um, when should I seek help? And I've somewhat referred to this a little bit earlier. But if you cannot function and do the things you need to do to just lead your life, um, you know, and, and have some joy in your life, too, I think that's a, an important point as well, then um, then you should seek help. So, you know, if you just can't do what you normally do, then that might mean something's not quite hitting on the cylinders that you normally hit on. And, and so seeking some help would be a, a good idea. And you could go to your support network first, but uh, certainly it's, it's uh, it, it is somewhat of a stigma that, you know, when you go and you get counseling and you have a therapist or something, uh, well, we've been working at this for the last 40 years, trying to make it not a bad thing to have a therapist. And yet people still have a tendency to think that uh, something's wrong with them if, uh, you know, if they need help. Uh, I just hope that you don't think that way. <laughs> and if you need help, you know, you ask for it because there's help all around, all around your support network. And so sometimes we just have to get through and get by some old thinking, to, you know, to, to make it okay. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and Dennis, any other thoughts? Yeah, go ahead. So, sometimes this can be a temporary situation that you're dealing with, right? And, and, you know, maybe some of the way that you know you need to seek help is if it's if it's longer, right? I mean, if, it, if it's a more sustained period of time where you're just not able to, you know, feel joy, as you said, um, is that normal at times or, you know, it, yeah. What's yeah, what's going, that like? Yeah, going back to our uh, you know, when we talked about sometimes we feel sad by things. And uh usually that is temporary. It, it 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 sort of fades, you know, after a day or two. But if you uh if you're talking about depression, which is a darkness that sort of descends on somebody's mind, body, and soul, I mean, you know, it's uh that is something that needs professional help. Uh, and so, it, yeah, it, it is it is something temporary. Um, as a counselor, one of the things that um, I had in my office was the uh, the wisest counselor is time. Because, you know, like if you don't like the mood you're in, just wait. And, you know, another mood's probably coming. That's normal, you know, that there's a flow like that. But if you descend into, you know, some darkness or anxiety that really gets in the way of you getting things done, then that's the time to seek help for sure. Yeah. Um, other questions. Um, we've got lots of resources here too that you know we wanted to put up here and and certainly 911 is is one if you or somebody is is in trouble uh in danger or some you know that's that's perfectly okay to call 911 and uh they're trained to you know help people or sort of figure things out from there so uh and then there's the national suicide prevention hotline as well and a crisis text line uh, as well so you know government programs there's uh, stuff on the internet. You can do a Google search and, and find uh, a lot of information. I usually try to go by the first top ones that show up because usually those are ones that paid for advertising. <laughs> and uh, a, lot of, a lot of the public resources are usually listed down further, you know, uh, when you do a search of some sort. So um, the other support, BetterHelp is a, a, a company that, that got formed and got a lot of notoriety during uh, COVID. Uh, and, you know, just be aware that therapists are like doctors. Uh, you might not like 
like the first one or two you get to, it's okay to just say, you know, let me try someone else. Let me try someone else. Uh, every every therapist has a different approach, different personality, and so be okay with trying to get a good fit. So, uh, I know there's businesses out there now that are trying to match therapists with clients, and so they're they're looking at personalities and you know they fill out information forms. So. It's like eHarmony.com, you know, except for uh, therapists and, and clients. So, so how about uh, questions from the group? Anything, um, anything on your minds that we might be able to address? If you want to put the questions uh, in on the chat, <clears throat> uh, we can take a look at them there and whatever ones that seem to come up. So if you have some questions, feel uh, feel free to let us know. Yeah, you can un unmute or use the chat um, and we'll address those questions. Um, I did want to, while you're, while you're thinking of, you know, any questions that you might have, I did want to mention that, um, you know, our members, GPAR members, um, as a member of the National Association of Realtors, do have access to one of their member benefits. It's the telehealth plan, which provides um, telehealth um, access 24 seven, 365, um, you know, so access whenever you need it. And then there are some other local resources available too through, um, you know, more Philadelphia based. Um, one of the, you know, groups that I found was the healthyminesphilly.org. Um, and they actually provide some local um, training for, you know, maybe it's not you yourself that's going through a um, mental health, you know, um, either crisis or, or something of that nature, but you're one of those support people, you know, maybe you have a friend who's going through something. How do you deal with it? And how do you recognize when it's too much for even you to, to address? So um, that healthymindsphilly.org is, is kind of a really interesting resource that kind of provides some of that training um, and how to recognize that as one of those support people. Um, it looks like Mark Silver has his hand raised. Hey guys. Um, hey, this is uh, something I've gone through very deeply and, as a matter of fact, extremely very recently. Um, it's the second time in my adult life that uh, the the actions and decisions that I've made over a sustained period of time and the amount of business and uh, stress that I put myself under uh, led to a mental breakdown, led to panic attacks, led to severe and almost near uh, death depression. And uh, as somebody who uh, I'm well versed in all the mindset books, I'm well versed in all those things. And when um, you have a, a somewhat healthy mind and you can live between the bandwidths of, you know, uh, you know, you can bounce back from the bottom and, and get back into the, the healthy zones and, uh, you know, you can make decisions and you can make choices. Depression is another place that can't you can't make choices and decisions that just doesn't uh, it just doesn't work. Um, I guess one of the things that and the mental health world failed horrifically for me. Um, I reached out to numerous, I mean, like dozens of therapists and nobody would either reply or they were not taking any clients. Uh, mm -hmm. I had one person take me on as a client to offer uh, his help, said I needed to also speak to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist turned me down. So I told the therapist that they turned me down and then he canceled my appointment. So when you're in like these depressive states, it's just like, and you're asking for help and you're trying to get help and you can't, um, it's catastrophic, it can be catastrophic. Two, uh, at three months, three weeks after my my extreme low, when I wrote a suicide note and uh, walked out the door to execute on my on my tra mm -hmm. tragedy, um, I had to, I came out publicly online uh, about how hard of a time I was having, which was incredible for me um, because I ha didn't have to lie about it anymore you know going into the office and like still trying to do work and doing the daily activities to, to be successful to show up for our families to you know uh, I, it's like I, I didn't need everybody calling and trying to fix me because you can't really be fixed um, but I guess my question, if I have a question out of this, and one of the things I'm trying to learn is um, what are the signs, and you have this in your slides, what are the signs of when you are working so much to the point where 
you lost a grip like you know like you say balance is there's no such thing right to push the boundaries to get beyond like you need to actually go beyond but um one of the things that i'm hoping that i learned from this this most recent uh journey is that i can figure out a way to understand um when i'm pushing my limits beyond health you know in real estate when we're busy and there are hundreds of people involved in in each you know in all the transactions that are happening and um i don't know yeah mark uh, i i've got a question for you um what made you turn the corner there because it sounds like you you went right to the end of your rope and then yeah you know so i let what, go of the i let go what, of the rope you let go i let go of the rope um I, um, so the, that morning when my adrenaline kicked in and I chose, and I ended up not, uh, stepping in front of a moving vehicle, um, I, my mind said in a very fragile state, okay, so you've chosen to live. What are you going to do about it now? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to get back to a place where you are in a new normal or a, a normal, right? So, um, and for me that went, bent to, uh, went out to, I'm a musician. I went back to, went out to a bluegrass jam the next night, went to a concert the night after that, uh, trying to just re-engage. I started to come out to my musician friends who know me really well and said, look, I'm fucking terribly depressed. I'm sorry for the language, but like, I'm just so depressed right now. Yeah. I'm having a hard time helping myself. Um, and then I did ketamine therapy with under the guidance of a therapist, which is a psychedelic um, uh, process of sort of igniting the brain and the chemistry in the brain. And for me, that was uh, I was able to experience gratitude, mm. full bodied gratitude, um, which and uh, and also the something happened inside my brain where it said, um, you know, if this the feeling came amongst me that life was great. It wasn't, you know, and I was, and I was able to sort of say, if this is what life can feel like, then yes, I say, I, I say yes to life. Um, and in, in a depressed state was unable to manufacture any type of that. And I still am struggling like to not feel joy, even the things that I love to do, it's not really there, you know, like I'm going, still going through all the motions and businesses picking up and like the, the new year's already going to look really good. Uh, financially, these things are really um, going to make a, I can see like a light at the end of the tunnel, but um yeah um it's it's yeah. still like what is that extra that last 25 percent of me yeah. that has not returned yeah. and how do i tap into that uh, yeah. you know well mark uh one thing that i encourage you to do this year is uh celebrate those wins celebrate celebrate those those thoughts that you had that brought you back that said i'm, I'm choosing life Celebrate those. Celebrate those. Think about them. Uh, feed them, because that's what that's what brought you back. You know, it was those thoughts of I'm choosing life. I'm choosing life. I mean, that could be a, a mantra to help you. Is is and and all of you, you know, think about just short little phrases that can inspire you. Like I'm choosing life. And and then that erases and cancels out all those negative voices that also are there trying to compete, you know, for your attention. So um, so I, I just thank you very much for sharing, because it's almost a case study of what we were talking about today, uh, of recognizing, you know, good things and also, you know, the the challenges that we're going to hear the the different competing voices, you know, when you chose life, man, I tell you what, that's, that's, uh, that's something to celebrate, you know, because well, at the end of the year, we usually take a look at the year and, and you know, look forward and, you know, say, okay, what, what, what do we want to do in the, in the new year? Um, and, and I think that that should be a celebration uh, for you is, is just choosing life and all the things that led up to that. You know, that therapist that took you on, the unique uh, thing you tried, which sounded like, you know, you know it, it it took the part of your brain that needed to be expressed and, and you were allowed to express it. And, uh, you know, they're doing a lot of wonderful work now with uh, different psychedelics that they made illegal back in the 70s when, uh, you know, 
you know, people were experimenting with it and, and it is dangerous. And so you do it under, you know, the guise of a physician or a therapist that, you know, knows about it and, and it can be very, uh, very good. So I, again, I think you're the case study that for this group, as far as, you know, recognizing that, you know, you were depressed and you, you know, you're ready to end things, you know, that that was something that uh, you knew was not, not right. And, and uh, that brings up the topic of, what I call unhealthy normal. <clears throat> unhealthy normal is we get uh, into an abusive relationship, for example, and and you know, and, and it's just you know, I adjust to it. You know, it's crazy, but you know, I I don't know how to get out of it. And pretty soon, it's just normal. It's something that's you know what I call an unhealthy normal. So. That's what you're saying when, you know, you say, how do you know when to reach out and, and, and look for and find support? It's, it's when you're, you recognize an unhealthy normal. And, and so stress can be that way. Relationships can be that way. Business can be that way. Business can sneak into your life and occupy every second of your life if you let it. It's a, it's a principle. It's called Parkinson's Law. Parkinson discovered that uh, work will always expand to take up the time you give it. Work will always expand to take up the time you give it. So you have to be aware enough to say, okay, this is the end of my work and the beginning of the rest of my day, you know, when I'm going to spend time with family or friends or music or wh whatever it is, because that, that feeds a different part of who you are. Uh, that's very important. So thanks again, Mark. Uh, we have another question or a hand raised from Angelita Bird. Thank you again, Mark, for sharing, um, you know, your story and, and experience and everything. And, um, you know, I did just respond back with a, with a question for you, Mark. So feel free to share that with the group. Um, but Angelita, let's move on to, to your question. If you want to unmute yourself. Yes. Hi. Good morning, everyone. And uh, yes, thank you, Mark, uh, for sharing uh, that. Uh, I can actually relate to Mark in so many ways <laughs> uh, myself. Um, uh, and I'm so happy that I clicked on the email this morning for GPAR uh, to be able to come in here. I'm pleasantly surprised there should be hundreds, if not thousands of realtors on here right now, right? Because <laughs> uh, uh, we do have a very challenging career and having been licensed now and doing this business going on 18 years come February, uh, it can definitely be very taxing uh, mentally. And it's also, I find interesting uh, that, um, I love what you said, uh, Dennis, about celebrating uh, your wins and celebrating uh, your small successes. And that is a problem that I know that I have. And I was just having this conversation last night about it. Uh, I'm actually about to, and it's, it's just all tying together, uh, but uh, I'm about to be featured on a nationally uh, syndicated talk show around my life, around being exhausted and tired with what it is that I do. And it's not that I don't like what I do, it's just that it's very exhausting, right? At times, because I, I'm a team leader. Uh, and then of course I have a life like how Mark, um, Again, I can relate to your creator, you, you know, your musician, myself too, before getting into real estate, you know, being in the arts and loving the arts. And that's really where my heart is. But real estate is what saved my life because I didn't have anything to fall back on when I got in real estate. Right. Um, so it's just so many different um, uh, dynamics uh, in that. And uh, to now have this platform, which is, I think is uh, extremely important because I'm being, a, me being a leader and I teach mindset and I help other people all the time with their issues and their problems, because that's really what real estate is. We're professional problem solvers. But then you turn around and say, well, what about my own personal problem? How do I solve that? Right. You know, and then in addition to, again, having these many successes or huge successes and 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 going through all these different things in real estate, you just I don't know what it is. It's just like for me, it's like, OK, well, I did that. OK, so what? OK, what's next? Right. And mm -hmm. right now, I'm not even excited about 
this whole story that they wanted to create around me and my life, you know, that's going to be aired uh, for a New Year's special about being New Year, New You in the new year, and also to feeling better and looking better, right? And I just, I don't know, it's just really hard to explain. Maybe you can help me explain that, Dennis, because last night, as I was having this conversation with a friend of mine, I'm like, why is it that I don't celebrate someone would be highly excited with this opportunity that keeps coming to me and all these great things but i just don't get excited by it so maybe you can help me out here dennis angelita you're a perfect example of how difficult we can be with ourselves uh we are often our worst critics and so i think that critical voice is in your head and it's it's saying what you know people want to hear about me are you kidding me i got all these challenges all these problems you know and and so i'd like for you to think about the good things that have happened you said real estate saved your life um how so that would be interesting for people to hear uh there's going to be little road marks uh along your journey that others might be at right now. And so uh, think of your story, not in a, you know, braggadocio way (laughs) that, you know, hey, you know, and I I think that's what's bothering you right now is, you know, the real story. You were there, (laughs) you know? Very much so. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And I don't have a problem. I'm very open with my story. Like, it's nothing to hide. You know, I was a teen mom. I was 14, pregnant on welfare, trying to figure it out, right? And Mm -hmm. I was, my daughter was just now becoming a teenager. And uh, I was a college dropout. And I needed to make money. And the arts was not paying me, of course. So I got into real estate back in February of 2006. And literally, that's what changed the trajectory of my life financially and everything else. So and now people are wanting to hear my story and want to learn about all of how I did the things that I've done and now leading a large team and all these things and which is great. And I'm thankful. Trust me, I'm very thankful and grateful for it. But that is what I think my roadblock is, is why is it that I can't celebrate my wins why i can't celebrate my success like what is but yet i want to celebrate everybody else's i read i get i get i'm happier celebrating other people's successes but not my own yes yes and and so um and that's great you know because you want to serve you want you want to serve others uh through you know just what they can learn from your journey uh and just remind people that they've got to take their journey uh and remind them of not only the successes you had, but also the challenges along the way. Uh, Because a lot of people will look at the successes and say, oh yeah, I can do that. But you know what? They also have to go through the crucible, the crucible of all the challenges that uh, you you went through yourself. Um, So, you know, it's just just, uh, share a balanced story. You know that yeah here here are my successes but uh i had a lot of challenges along the way too and if you can give them some uh things you did to help you know move you out of that uh and around that obstacle you know that that would be uh, a good thing to hear in the story as well but therapy dennis therapy <laughs> therapy <laughs> lots of therapy <laughs> huh yes. therapy and reading and working on myself consistently yes <laughs> well we're all for that. And that is something that everybody should take away is that we all need to be learners. No matter how old you are, we all need to be learners. Technology is coming in. It's going to revolutionize and change a lot of things, including real estate. And we've got to be learners. We've got to be curious and lean into this new technology uh, and find out what it's all about, how we can use it to help us uh, and our businesses be successful. So, uh, uh, so lots of lots of good tips there, and thanks so much, uh, you know, for sharing. And Dennis, we-, um, we have a comment from Janice. Okay. Janice, you can unmute whenever you're ready. Hi, sorry, I'm on my phone. I'm not have, knowing how to work Zoom on my phone. So I jumped in a little late, I apologize, but this is an amazing presentation and it's so in line with my whole entire life. 
And I want to say two things is that Mark, first of all, you're so brave and I appreciate you sharing your story because one of the big things that I see all the time is shame. People carry shame and you coming forward and saying something that I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of, but a lot of times the world does and people carry shame is really huge because I'm sure uh, hopefully it helped you feel a little freer, like you said, but also it's going to help other people realize that they don't have to have shame and that they can help themselves or reach out and get help. And then for you and Angelita, what I want to say is that it's almost like what Dennis was saying about these, um, these relationships that are abusive or unhealthy, you sort of, you you disappear bit by bit by bit. And so then it's almost like, I don't know how you're supposed to realize that you've disappeared in order to help yourself because by that point, you're already disappeared, right? So two things that I know are other people seeing that you're drowning, seeing that you're slipping, seeing that you're disappearing and reaching out a hand to pull you so that they can sort of like say, hey, you're disappearing because I know when I was in a narcissist, married to a narcissist, I disappeared slowly and didn't realize it until it was the breaking point. And with Angelita, what, you, what you're going through, when you say, why don't I celebrate? The way I look at it is instead of saying, why don't I celebrate, is finding a way to celebrate. And again, it's really hard to come back from no celebration and feeling flat to all of a sudden being like, yippee, but it's like little bitty steps. So it's a mixture of gratitude and celebration, gratitude and celebration. And if you, you already said you practice gratitude, I find that when I practice gratitude, it helps me then be able to see something worth celebrating and remember, oh, celebrate this. And every time I practice gratitude and every time I celebrate something teeny tiny, like I did something personal today that was a huge shameful thing for me to deal with. And I just came and dealt with it. That's why I was late. And I walked here celebrating myself for doing this thing that any anybody who's an adult should be able to do. But I celebrated it for myself instead of making myself feel like crap. And now that's going to enable me to now take one step further and one step further and then really starting to celebrate. It's like it gains momentum and it makes everything start to become a celebration. It brings the joy back because that's what it's all about. And I love what you said. And I think me and you are soul sisters. So feel free to reach out to me on mm -hmm. the side. That's great, Janice. Thanks very much. Um, so what you do when you practice appreciation and gratitude is the way your brain functions is you cannot be uh, depressed and feel grateful at the same time. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. So that's a way of uh, learning about how our brain works. So uh, if you're feeling down, you start to make a list of the things you're grateful for. And, and when you read those things, you know, you just automatically start to you know, rise in how you feel and, and things vibrate faster and quicker and healthier, you know, for you. So, um, so that's what you're doing. And, and so thanks very much, Janice, for sharing, uh, you know, uh, that, that celebration. Uh, and it may feel weird just because it feels weird doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do for you and your men mental health. So lean into being discomfortable with, you know, with, with doing something different because of course it's going to feel odd uh just keep doing it and then uh, you can build a nice healthy practice that way so good uh, the other the last one that we have um in terms of a comment is emily emily if you want to unmute yourself oh emily are you there Looks like you're on mute. I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I want to answer phone. Some call coming out, coming in. So yes, I want to share um my experience that we um we were so fortunate to uh with Annette, uh, Brainy, and some other um members uh, leaders from the GPAR that we recently finished the leadership training by GPAR, and Dennis is our trainer. So. One important thing I learned uh, that um, we need balance our energy. Every day we were pulling not only for, for me, I'm taking the lead in different organizations and different positions in national, state and local level. So 
it's like, you know, there's Zoom meetings here and there's activities here and there. So I feel like I'm pulling out all different directions. So focus on my priorities is every day um, thing that I have to practice. So what I learned is I need to focus on, pick up the priorities, what I want to accomplish. And then things that I think I can push away, I would just push away. Um, I want to focus on the most important things in my life, what I want to accomplish in this period of time. And I need to have some plans for in the next couple of years, what I want to accomplish. So work on that uh, in the daily base and then also in the weekly base. It's a very, very hard practice. Um, it just like you have to balance, you have to make a living. As a realtor, make sure you have a certain income. However, as your mission commitment to the community, to the industry, so I want to spend some time for the all the positions that take. So it's kind of like hard to practice, but I'm trying to learn to be focusing and it's very, very important. And wow. I, I appreciate that, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Emily. Uh, so Emily's talking about the Pareto principle, the 80-20 principle that many of you maybe heard. Uh, and that's 20% of our effort usually yields 80% of our results. And so uh, just learning how to prioritize uh, is something that human beings aren't very good at. So uh, if you can learn how to discipline yourself to identify the priorities in your life, including your own good mental health, that should be a priority for you. Uh, and, and practice it. Uh, practice gratitude on a daily basis. Uh, practice appreciation when you gather family members uh, around the holiday, start uh, just saying, okay, what do you what do you appreciate about uh, this this gathering? What do you appreciate about each other? And and uh, and I'll tell you what, it'll create energy that you won't believe, because we like to feel appreciated and valued. Uh, so um, that's a great end of the year exercise. I, I also have some resources. Uh, uh, here that you can take a look at. Um, Roger Mills and Elsie Spittle were uh, uh, authors and therapists out in uh, California. They practiced in the San Francisco area. And I spent a lot of years uh, with them uh, talking about inner wisdom and uh, mental health. Uh, they believe that good mental health is your birthright that we're all born with good mental health. And then a lot of things happen to us in our lives that uh, get in the way. And, and they were therapists to help people, uh, you know, find that blockage and get it out of the way. There's that book chatter I was telling you about. Um, so some great resources there. If you want to, if you're a reader and, and you like to look into some things, um, feel free to take a look at those. Um, also, uh, some podcasts that are really great, The Knowledge Project and uh, Hidden Brain are just wonderful podcasts. If you like listening to podcasts or TED Talks, YouTube, uh, Brene Brown talks a lot about vulnerability. Uh, I think, you know, you heard people become vulnerable in, in this session. Uh, what that does, ironically, is it draws us toward those people, because when somebody shares a story and shows their vulnerability, we all look at them and say, wow, they're just like I am, you know? And, and it draws us toward one another. So um, so Brene Brown has written and researched that topic extensively. So uh, you'll enjoy her work if you haven't already. So, uh, so there's a couple other wonderful resources there. Um, I really appreciated uh, the opportunity to, to meet you and thanks for sharing your stories here and certainly look forward to more work that we might be able to, to, to do together. So uh, this is all about making the world a better place, making the world in between our ears <laughs> a better place. That's, that's what good mental health is. Uh, so uh, yeah. anything else? I um, I just can't thank you enough, Dennis, for doing this. I think this was very helpful. Um, you know, like I said at the beginning, I feel like being a realtor, being a broker in the real estate industry in general is very much um, a self-paced uh, profession. And sometimes 
you know, you can feel isolated in, in this industry. And I've seen that from a lot of our, our realtors um, in the past. And um, I think this was a really good way of bringing people together, letting them know that they're not, you know, alone. Um, social media can, I feel like, really impact your view, your worldview sometimes. And, and, you know, people go on social media and they're only sharing the good parts of their every day, but you kind of makes you feel like when you're not feeling okay, it's abnormal. And I think, you know, knowing that it's not is, is very helpful. Um, I'm very glad that the diversity committee decided to do this. Yeah. And uh, I did see some commentary that, you know, they'd like to continue on um, with these types of sessions uh, moving forward. So I'll definitely take that back to the committee and, and let them know. But um, Annette, I don't know if you're still on, but is there anything, uh, any last minute thoughts that yeah. you want to share with the group? Yeah, I am on. And um, I think that today was very valuable. I do thank you, uh, Brittany, and also the diversity committee uh, for agreeing to do this because I was around when the financial, I've been around since 97 and I've seen people transition in this business on all kinds of levels and it, it can be uh, complicated. Um, but one of the things, I just want to share that one of the things that I do every morning for myself, I read about four motivational books every morning. I might do four pages out of each of the books and that's how I get my day started because we just don't know what we're going to encounter once we get on the phone, once we get onto these emails, uh, you know, it's crazy. And I do property management on top of that. So, but I, I really think, Dennis, what you did today um, was very valuable. I'm so happy that people opened up. I think the mission was accomplished. And I hope that any of us, if we do have any issues, I'm a firm believer in counseling. Please seek it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I would say I've probably been in counseling at least three or four different times in my own life. Uh, but life is very valuable and we want everybody to stay alive and be mentally healthy. So yeah. thank you very much. Well, thank you guys again so much for participating today. Thank you, Dennis. And again, this will be available um, on our YouTube channel um, after we have a chance to upload and, and um, finish you know, finalizing this. But thank you again. Have a great rest of your day and happy holidays to everyone on the call. All right. Take care, everybody.